If you own an LG C1 with the latest OLED panel from Guangzhou, you can actually hack the service menu to push HDR peak brightness to be as bright as an LG G1 with OLED EVO technology. But should you do it? In this video, I will show you LG's official response to this discovery and share my thoughts on the whole situation. Keep watching. Hello everyone, Vincent Hill from HDTV Test here. So late last week, some LG C1 owners with the latest OLED panel from Guangzhou discovered that they could unlock higher peak brightness from their TVs to reach a level similar to the more expensive LG G1 which is equipped with OLED EVO technology simply by going into the service menu and changing the panel identification field from C1 to G1. Boom! That's it! It's that simple! Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. But seriously, LG C1 owners who did this hack started reporting roughly a 10% increase in measured HDR peak brightness, reaching the figures expected of an LG G1, namely exceeding 800 nits on a 10% window after calibration. In response to all the publicity generated by this discovery, LG Electronics has issued the following statement. All LG OLED C1 TVs are designed to have similar visual performance no matter the parts included in them. Some of the G1 and C1 TVs could have similar spectral measurements. While some measurements might be the same, not all the elements of the panels are the same. This can manifest itself in many different visual characteristics. LG Electronics has built a menu system for our engineers that was not designed for consumers, and it's not something a consumer can access with their supplied remote. As part of that system, there is an ability to switch TV profiles to match the parts to the model. This is something a consumer should never do as it will affect measurable and perceivable capabilities, will not allow the TV to perform to its ideal capabilities, and potentially block the TV from receiving proper updates in the future. It is important that we state that accessing menus that the supplied remote cannot access can both void the warranty and cause the product to work abnormally, and under certain conditions can damage the TV. To be honest, this is a response that's entirely expected from LG. After all, they are never going to come out and say, Nice discovery, well done mate. Just stop buying our G1 OLED. Instead, go for a C1 and hope that you get the latest panel from Guangzhou, in which case you can just change a code in the service menu to make it perform like a G1. All the best, and we'll still honor the warranty as if you bought the G1, only that you paid a cheaper price. But, let us analyze LG's statement and see if there's any truth to it. When LG says not all elements of the panels are the same, I think what the company means is this. The same spectral power distribution or SPD only indicates that the OLED stack is the same, due to the addition of a new green emitting layer which is partly responsible for the increased efficiency and luminance potential. However, an OLED panel, depending on how you define a panel, may contain other elements besides the OLED stack, such as the T-Con and perhaps even the front filter. And LG is saying that there are differences between the OLED panels put into the C1 and the OLED panels put into the G1, even though they may measure the same spectrally and share the same panel identification code in the service menu. I am currently doing a side-by-side -side comparison video between the LG G1 and the Sony A90J OLED. Many people believe that these two TVs use the exact same panel, based on the same spectral power distribution measured on both televisions. But from what I've seen, my LG G1 review samples exhibited noticeably more pink tint of axis than the Sony A90J, and in fact all other consumer OLED TVs including the C1, suggesting that the panel filter or the front coating might be different. If it is indeed true that LG C1 panels are different from G1 panels, even if they measure the same spectrally, then changing the service menu code to push a C1 to G1 peak brightness levels may lead to other side effects, such as shortened lifespan which you may not know until a few months or years later. But if you are absolutely convinced that there is no way LG Display, which is the supplier of all these OLED panels, will run two separate manufacturing lines, one for the C1 and another for the G1, 
because it's just too inefficient, let's consider from another point of view. An OLED television is more than just the OLED panel itself. The panel needs to be mounted on a backplate. The backplate and all the components need to be put into a cabinet with a specific airflow and ventilation design to prevent overheating. And the speakers are also different. The LG G1 Gallery series is designed to be mounted flush to the wall, and its speakers are more powerful than those on the C1 which is tuned to be reflected forward by the front plate of the tabletop stand. So when you change the service menu code from a C1 to a G1, it affects not only the peak brightness, but also all these other attributes. You're basically telling the software that, hey, I have a G1 here. So the picture, the sound, the compensation cycle algorithm, the automatic brightness limiter should all behave like a G1. The G1 speakers are of higher wattage than the C1s, so if you ask the C1 to perform like a G1, the audio limiter threshold may be raised in a manner that can no longer protect the drivers from being blown. The G1 is originally designed to deliver higher peak brightness, which is perhaps compensated by a certain ventilation and airflow pathway within its slim cabinet, since there's no heatsink on board, unlike the Sony A90J and the Panasonic JZ2000. The C1 may not have the benefit of these cooldown features, so if you drive a C1 to be as bright as a G1, you risk causing components to overheat and the TV to fail prematurely, and speaking from personal experience, Premature failure spoils all the fun. To some people, venturing into the service menu to squeeze out even higher peak brightness is thrilling. It is fun. You're getting more performance without having to pay extra. You're getting something for nothing. It's like overclocking a GPU or CPU. But when overclocking a CPU, you normally have to apply better thermal paste and a bigger heatsink. And on a consumer television, you can't really do that. At the end of the day, it's a free world, and you can do whatever you want to your TV. But ask yourself, is it worth risking all this, and risking voiding the warranty, just to get 10% higher measured peak brightness? Remember, our eyes perceive brightness logarithmically, so a 10% increase according to a colorimeter definitely won't translate to a 10% increase in perceived brightness. Furthermore, because of how HDR10 content is mastered according to the absolute PQ standard, you won't even notice the difference in most HDR scenes, which is the conclusion of some reviewers when comparing between the G1 and last year's CX or this year's C1. It is entirely possible for LG to stop this hack by removing the adjustable field in a future firmware update. They have added the GSR or Global Sticky Reduction option to disable logo-based auto-dimming through a firmware update. They can easily take away the adjustable field that allows you to change a C1 to G1 through another firmware update. Even worse, there is nothing, absolutely nothing to stop LG from locking all of us out of the service menu forever, to stop people from poking around where they shouldn't be poking around. It will be a sad day if it comes to that, because we will no longer be able to turn off auto dimming on LG OLED televisions through the TPC or temporal peak luminance control and the GSR or global sticky reduction settings. The first rule of Fight Club is, if you found a hack, just keep it to yourself. So let's say LG Electronics go for the less nuclear option of just disabling the adjustable field in the service menu through a firmware update. You have two choices if you wish to continue enjoying G1 peak brightness on your C1. 1. You can turn off firmware updates forever, in which case you will miss out on some of the improvements planned in future firmware upgrades such as 4K 120fps Dolby Vision support, or perhaps a fix for the HDR tone mapping of hard clip in game optimizer mode. Your other option is to keep the adjustable field at G1, so even if LG disables the field through a firmware update, your C1 will still perform like a G1 permanently. Programmatically, it is not difficult for LG to detect if this field matches the model name and serial number of your TV, and block any future firmware updates. Logistically, the company can issue a service bulletin to all its technicians to specifically check if this field is assigned correctly when carrying out warranty work, and refuse warranty if it doesn't match. In my opinion, it is not worth the hassle just to get 10% higher peak brightness in measurement, which may not even materialize in most HDR scenes. 
Before any of you accuse me of being an LG shield, and I know some of you always think that, I have criticized last year's LG NanoCell TV for its low contrast IPS panel. The Nano 90 is let down by its IPS LCD panel and strange local dimming algorithm. I'm just a Chinese dude with a Mancunian accent, trying to do the right thing, trying to give the right advice so potential buyers can make an informed decision. If you would like to watch more videos on LG's 2021 OLEDs, please click here for our playlist and I will see you in the next video.